and then it started the darkness started opening up the clouds were cracking open and then the rainbow start shining bright and i was really? like wow sure you know that is god is god is definitely working in the midst of all of that uh -huh. in the midst of things looking bleak and dark and and times are changing and we were so accustomed to doing things a certain way yeah. and all of a sudden now we're forced to do it a different way yeah. we got to remember who's with us you got to remember who's with us and he's the one that we're following he's the one that's leading us and maybe it might not be how we did it before but we're still going to be able to do what he's called us to do because he's called us for it to do it and and that's my mandate uh what i've called you every person is different but we all serve a, a part in the kingdom a part of the body of christ and we all need each other to yeah. help one another so that we can bring forth what he desires and what he wants Amen, and um this this might you got some are you going to say something no no i'm no, just agreeing with what you're saying. <laughs> please continue <laughs> okay okay so um this might I don't know if this is going to go over your head, but I want to share it with you. Go on, please. This happened yesterday. It happened yesterday because I was praying for the heart of his people. And, and I felt like there's so many voices and there's so many things being said. And I started praying for God's people, his, their hearts. Um, and as I began to do that, suddenly I had, he gave me this vision and I was in heaven. And I was in heaven and there was this massive king's table it was beautiful beautiful king's table laid out as far as i could see in the vision and then i began to see not all quite a bit of his prophets sitting on that table and then suddenly i saw the lord jesus enter that room and he began to speak to his to some of his prophets not all of them there was a lot and they were all there. I didn't know each one, but when I saw them, I knew they were prophets of the Lord. Okay. And he began to speak to them and talk to them. And he said, why, the Lord Jesus said to his prophets, why are you bickering? Why are you fighting amongst each other? We're supposed to be family. Your family, wow. why are you Why are you bickering? Why are you fighting one another? Wow. Well, Lord, this person is speaking about this topic. This person is speaking about this thing. And I don't feel that that's right. And they were saying, and they were talking to Jesus like this. And Jesus began to speak to them and say, to some, I'm speaking of to sharing my heart on certain topics, certain, certain aspects of certain things I'm sharing with certain people and I'm allowing them to speak. Wow. And, and then some of them didn't like that because that wasn't their specialty. That wasn't their area where they are known. But the Lord Jesus was speaking to, to, to his specific prophets at the table. And telling them, yes, I'm giving this message to some people, to others this. And then they were bickering and, and like, well, well, what's the next word? Well, I want the next word. No, I want the next word. Well, I have a relationship with Jesus. They were saying these things in the vision. I'm standing. I'm like, oh, God, please help me, you know. And then some of them were like, well, you know, I have a relationship with you, Jesus. And he's like, yes, I know that. And then another one will say, well, you know, I have a deeper relationship with the Father. Wow. And then Jesus said, and he looked at all of them and he says, do you think you know the father like I? And I'm like, and I was like blown back, sitting there listening to all of this as I'm praying and, and I'm seeing this vision unfold. He says, I've been, I, I, do you sit at the right hand of, my, of, of the father like I? And the prophets all began to put their heads down like this and they're listening to him. He's like, I am his trusted servant and is loyal. I've been loyal to uh, him. And that's why I sit on the right side of him. Do you think you know the father like I? And then they were like this. Wow. And he started talking to them because I've been building my relationship with him before time. And I'm still working on it. Do you think you know him more than I? And the prophets all put their head down and started saying, stop bickering, stop fighting with one another, your family. And oh. I'm like shocked when I'm seeing all of this. And I'm like, wow. And then the vision ended and I was just crying because <laughs> wow, that's it so was old. the heart of God you know for his people well i want this what's the next word well you shouldn't be talking about that net well yeah god is delegating who he's choosing to speak on certain issues and certain topics and just because you may not see that the way you thought doesn't mean that god's not in it sure. you know sure, sure. and for them to be fighting about it and i was just like wow i was like i didn't share that with nobody but i don't know why i felt led 
to oh, share that with you. I did. You know, it's, it's, go ahead. <laughs> I'm really, really glad that you did share that. And, uh, and, and like, um, like even yesterday when I was talking to my friend Dion, we spoke about a table, first of all, and that there is a place for you at the table. And we also spoke a lot about family. And we also, you know, shared, I shared with her about, you know, the covenant and what Jesus was doing. I'll go into that a bit in a sec, but I know, I know why you shared that. I'm really glad that you did. And I think that um, it's still, you know, like, and it's, it still really comes back to um, identity doll because, um, you know, if you understand the story of the prodigal son, do you mind if I just share with you a little bit about the prodigal son story? I don't know. If you <laughs> Um, I recorded a, a, a episode called the tale of the two prodigals and um, the story around that in short version is um, back in March when Australia had gone into full lockdown, I, because of the nature of my job was able to travel. I was given work exemptions. So I found myself on, uh, on work assignment. I was in a hotel, I was exhausted and I just wanted to listen to some worship music and just, just love on my Jesus. That was all I wanted to do. And uh, I kid you not, the Holy Spirit turned up. He just sat and I could feel him sitting. He was like sitting next to me. Um, and I, he started speaking to me and he said, son, did you know there's two prodigals in this prodigal son story? And I went, come again. That's was my response. <laughs> come again. <laughs> and and he, says, he says, he said, read it. All right. All right. Okay. So I read it. I don't get it, Lord. He goes, read it again. So this time I prayed and I asked him and I just really meditated on the words and as I'm reading, all of a sudden, um, the bit towards the end of the story just jumped out of the page, brother. It was like a Ramoth word type thing. And suddenly I realized that he's emphasizing the elder son because the elder son was told by the father, you've always been with me. But he wouldn't come into the house of the father to celebrate the return of the lost son. And suddenly it dawned on me. And then he started speaking to me really clearly, Joel. And he said to me, he said, will you pray for my ministers? I went, yeah, sure. Why? And he goes, because they've done all they, they have defined themselves by what they've done for me rather than who they are to me. And I'm weeping at this point. And, um, <laughs> and, and he go, and, and he just said to me, will you please pray for my ministers in America? It was clear as anything, Joel. And I went, all right, sure, Lord. What, 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 why, what's going on? What's wrong? And he just showed me picture one after the other of men. What am I going to do now? Am I going to lose my church now? Are people not going to come back? Like one after the other, question, 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 question. And I felt like the Lord was saying, but I've always been with them, son. I just want them to know that I'm still here. I'm here, you know. He says, well, you pray for my ministers. He kept saying it to me. So I just started praying in tongues, praying, praying, praying. And, um, and, the, and he really, he really put a burden on my heart for full-time ministers. And, um, and the other thing, the other thing that I just felt led to share now is um, my friend and I from um, Katie, Texas in America, we've become friends recently. He, him and I talked a lot about the gifts and the office and the, all that kind of stuff. And he shared a really amazing story with me. He shared with me how him and a bunch of blokes just got together and just wanted to, you know, like, and these are very successful men in the corporate world, but that, 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 um, they had a good church life, but they wanted more. They wanted, they just wanted to encounter God. They wanted to encounter God together. And, um, and what was really interesting is um, my friend Martin was kind of like the seer. He'd always like sell things. And another guy was kind of like the one who was always good at bringing prophetic words. And one particular week, he said his friend, his friend that was the one who brings prophetic words started bringing forth things that he would see. And he was seeing things clearer than Martin had ever seen. And, and, and um, Martin was given words of prophecies and Martin's like, no, no, I'm the seer. This shouldn't be happening. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, what's going on? He says, and then the following week, it all changed up again. And he says, and in some ways, it, it kind of felt like God was playing a musical chairs with us. And I said, I said to the Lord, I said, what's going on? And the Lord showed him, your gift, your gift is not your identity. That's right. A gift is not your identity. That's right. And sadly, um, there's been some wonderful gifted prophets who have brought some amazing words. And, and yes, they've got a, 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 an aspect of the father's heart that he wants to highlight from them and, and stuff like that. But those who are um, secure, those who have grown to the point where they have like the heart of David, brother, they don't feel threatened. They're not worried about what other people bring that might be 
Well, I brought the word of the Lord last week, and that's what the nation needed to hear. How dare you bring the word of the Lord this week? And you know, uh, that 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 all just disappears when we mature in our Father's love. Because when you look at the Scripture, perfect love casts out all fear. This is the Lord showed me this year. Perfect love casts out all fear. One of the big benefits about perfect love casting out all fear is it eliminates the need to be right. I don't have to be right and you wrong. I just have to know the love of the father. And I just have to know that I've brought forth the word that he wanted me to bring. And it doesn't matter if my friend, you know, Tom brings a word out that's similar to mine, or he's talking about a topic that I've been talking about the last three weeks. How dare he talk about my topic? And that, he's trying to move us beyond that. So everything you shared was spot on. And what he's been showing me because restoring wow. the sons of the father, you know, the, the voices of the, the prophetic voices, the prophets, you know, they're, they're, they're sons right there who need to be more fully restored into the father's heart because that love, that perfect love will just drive out all that fear, that, that orphan mindset. Cause you know, sons don't compete against each other. They don't need to because we're family, right? Yeah. So I really mm-hmm. believe you were meant to share that. And I appreciate you sharing that the story behind the rainbow. Um, and, and the reason why, um, that I use that is because last year um, through a series of events, I kept seeing rainbows all the time. Now, when I uh, answered the Lord <laughs> to start a podcast and help me and find their voice, either within about a week, I lost my job. I was pushed onto a 12 month contract from a permanent job. Um, I was kicked off the radio that I was doing at the time. I was kicked out of leadership. I had false accusations leveled against me. This all happened like in, probably space of a month, anything that could be thrown at me was being thrown at me. And um, I, at least one occasion I was driving to work, I saw a rainbow like that. And then I just keep seeing rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. And when, um, when the HR manager told me that I was basically being pushed on to, well, she didn't say this, but they worded it like, this is the better fit for you type of stuff. And I'm like listening to this and I'm just getting railroaded, Joel. And as I'm listening to this, I just felt the Holy Spirit say, it's okay. Go with it. So, I mean, I wanted to, I, my, in my humanness, I was going to fight it. And, you know, this is not on and rah, rah, rah. And Lord, the Holy Spirit just gave me such a peace, you know, just to, such a green light just to accept it. So that picture that you're looking at behind you, behind me, was at the place that I'd been forced into, to force, the role that I was forced to take. And uh, that particular rainbow that I saw, uh, that's me sitting at my office window looking and I've gone to the toilet, come back and I'm looking at that and I'm like, I've got to take a picture of that because the <laughs> second time God had showed me a rainbow. And um, that particular day I was going to see a, a friend of mine, a, a, my, my, one of my spiritual fathers, someone I really look up to in the Lord. And I, I'm driving to his house and I'm driving along a road called the Southwest Highway. And as I'm driving along, I'm looking towards my left and I'm driving the car, I'm talking to my wife on Bluetooth speaker and I saw a rainbow, solid colours, not transparent see-through, I mean solid colours um, on the ground about, oh, about 100 feet away from me, hitting, you could see it hit the ground and it went up into the sky and I could, it was actually staying, it was actually following me and I'm driving along. And I'm said to, and there was hardly any clouds around. There was no logical scientific reason for this thing to even be there. And I'm saying to my wife, this thing's following me. <laughs> I was freaking out, you know? And uh, anyway, as I went to see my friend, uh, spiritual dad, Rayful, this um, rainbow literally stopped. All of a sudden just stopped, stopped at his town where he lives, just stopped. And that particular day he um, recognized that something special was about to occur and that God was calling me and, you know, God was commissioning me. And so we started, when we started the uh, home group, home fellowship, we called it aligned ecclesia. The reason why we called it aligned ecclesia is because if you look at the colors of the rainbow, they're all different colors, but they're the same rainbow. They don't compete against each other. And what the Lord was showing me is that his ecclesia is being aligned. His ecclesia is being aligned. And the other thing that he showed me is that his glory is in unity. That's his glory. And, uh, and I'll give you an example. Like, uh, probably January, 2018, he took me into the spirit and uh, he actually took me to, uh, to a mountain and I was actually looking uh, and it was like a valley and there was all these mountains. And I kid you not, Joel, I saw people 
on the left hand side of me, as far as the eye could see, and on the right hand side of me, the far as I could see. And this, and as they sang and as they worshipped unto the Lord their God, the Father, this colour, like each and every one of them had like this sound and this colour that just came out from their chest. Kid you not. Now actually, it actually went up into the air, actually went up into the air. All these different colours just went up into the air, hit at a certain point, and then descended on the throne. And as they descended on the throne, they just exploded into this like gold glory color. It was unbelievable. And, and I looked, I could tell you, kid you not, I looked and I was watching his face, the father's face. And it was just the most beautiful smile and joy and just love on his face. And I was like, and, um, and I'm like, wow. And then I looked underneath his throne and I could see like waters, rivers, living waters, just flowing, 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 going into the very same people these colors had come from. And I just saw this continuous loving on the father, the father pouring life into us, loving on the father, the poor. And suddenly it dawned on me. These are people from every tribe, every language, every nation. And I just said to the Lord, what did I just see? And the Holy Spirit said, <laughs> look up Revelation seven verse nine i went no worries so i read looked up revelation chapter seven verse nine which talks about the vision john had where he says every tribe every color every language right and i'm like wow what about the th what, what what about the rainbow you know what's with the rainbow lord he went look up revelations four so i went all right so i looked up revelations four now if you read revelations chapter four you'll get to verse three and you'll hear it there there it'll be everyone i've checked every translations and it says these words, a rainbow around about the throne, brother. How's that? So we're talking in the, the glory of the Lord is the rainbow around the throne, you know. And um, that's just something that is always, and I've had so many people comment on that picture. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to tell my wife when she gets home. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's like, don't you think it's time you change it up? I went, no, I don't want to. I've had some great conversations. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly but yeah it's just it's just you know because i mean ecclesia is not not a commonly understood word but we are the ecclesia i know it's a greek word but we are actually the ecclesia you know and that's something that he's been speaking to me about recently because when we decided to um go back to being a home church uh the original original idea was just to have a board meeting uh, about becoming a, a not-for-profit registered um, media ministry but we passed the motion and we decided we were going to be a home church as well. And so all these things started taking off at once, Joel, online, uh, media, home church. So I went to the Lord, right? I went to the Lord and I said, so Lord, what are we? Are we a home church? <laughs> are we a home? Are we an online church? Uh, are we a media ministry? And I kid you not, Joel, this is what he said to me. This is what he said. He said, son, it's like this. You are the church. Whether you express yourself online whether you express yourself in a home, whether you express yourself in media, you are the church. Just be the fellowship of my family in heaven. And I started to cry and I started to weep. I started to realize that's really all he cares about, man. You know, I mean, when, when he was about to be arrested in John chapter 17, it, we read, Father, let them be one as you and I are one. So that's really all he cares about. That's really all he's interested in is, you know, are we caring for each other? Are we supporting each other? Are we loving each other? Because that's the only way the world knows the words of his disciples. The world couldn't give a hoot how well we know the book of Colossians, Joel. They're not interested. They're not even looking at that, but they can't deny when they see the love of the father expressed through us to each other, can they? I mean, that not necessarily mean they'll come to the Lord. Hopefully they will, but they certainly can't deny the reality of his love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Yeah, our lives, our lives are our ministry and people see our lives as we're living it. And what you really, what you really walk in, what you really believe speaks of the heart because yes, your heart, your life, your heart reveals your life. Wow. What you believe in you, you really will do it. And so your life is revealing what you really believe. And so when people see that, that's the best, that's the best ministry. You walking in Christ, believing Christ, manifesting Christ, loving like Christ, people say you are Christ-like. Yes. I want what you have. That's that's the example. That and you can have it. 
There's nothing saying, well, no, you can't have it. You got to go through all of this. No, here's Christ. Yeah. I don't have to sell you my fruit. <laughs> you can pick it. It's oh, free. Good. I want to give it to you. Take it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like come, get, come to my church, come and fellowship because we're church. Yes. But don't have to go through five different session, sessions of this and that to be a member. When Christ freely gave, we freely give. Oh, you know on. what I mean? That's so good. So, I love that, mate. That's good. Yeah. Right, sell my fruit. Can I steal that? i love it right i love it i'm gonna have to I'm just take notes here Hang on. Um, nah that's, that's what it's all about you know because um you know we we want to we want the, we want that fruit to be freely received you know and we just want we just want people um i just want people to uncover cover to, to, to encounter and just just to know that Oh man, just to know that he is God. And that, and that's what I said to my friend Dion last night. I said, if you, if you really want me, like me personally, if you really want me to sum up the whole of 2020, as far as the body of Christ is concerned, I would do it like this. He wanted us to be still and know that he is God. Amen. That's it. Amen. Simple as that. I believe that. Huh? Amen. Because it's in the stillness. It's, it's in the stillness that that's where the transformation comes. I mean, once he's got your attention, he can begin to show you his heart. Amen. 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 That's yeah. very true. <laughs> I just, I just really wanted to share this because uh, that vision you shared with me was so powerful, and I really felt like, wow. Um, back in March um, in Australia, because I was tracking the release of this pandemic thing from December, January, thinking, oh, is it going to hit Australia? Is it going to hit Australia? So by March, you know, like it, it had really come onto our shores and I, you know, and I'm, you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, mate. I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. I do a lot of research on along that area. The Lord had to deal with me in that area and he has done, and I'm grateful for that, but I could feel a lot of these fears <laughs> coming back and um, I was starting to get a little bit fearful and a bit panicky uh, with it. And um, I, I don't know. I think you'll understand what I mean by this, but when a loving parent sees that their child's having a little bit of a, is he fit? Like they're freaking out about stuff. And I've done it with my kids. You'll grab that child and strongly say, stop, you know, because you just want to get them out of that headspace so you can calm them down. Right. <laughs> and I kid you not, Joel, the Holy spirit grabbed me. I felt it. He grabbed me and he went, stop, do not be conquered by Corona. And I went, okay, Lord, what are you trying what? to He did. He did. No, Jack, he did. And I could feel what? the that I was loving it. Like it wasn't, yeah. Like I knew it was the Holy spirit just by the, the anointing and the love. And, and, uh, and I just went, okay, Lord, all right, well, what are you trying to show me? And instantly, no joke. I saw an eclipse, a massive eclipse. And I, as I'm looking at this, I'm like, Lord, okay, what are you trying to show me? He said, the Lord is trying to eclipse my people's vision. Exactly what he said it's to the T. You know? And he says, but what he doesn't realize is just like he rolled the stone to seal me in the tomb and he couldn't stop my plans and purposes being seen by my people. He's not going to stop my plans and purpose being seen by my people. <clears throat> and the other thing that he showed me was um, that, that he was using what the, the enemy thought he was getting away with for good for his people. And uh, because mm -hmm. the, the thing about the thing about um, the thing about the tomb that Jesus was put into, it literally became the womb because he went in dead. He came out alive, brother. He went in dead. He came out alive, right? So the devil thinks he shut the church down. The devil thinks he's eclipsed what the Lord's doing. The devil thinks he's done all that, right? But what he doesn't realize is that, you know, um, the Corona is not his. Now, if you study what a Corona actually is, if you look at it, we know it means the world crown, but it's also the thing that you see around the sun when there's a total eclipse, they actually can see it around the sun. And so um, maybe people's perspective has been a little bit limited, but he's still the one with the crown. He's still the one who holds the crown. And uh, oh, about a week or so ago or two weeks, about a week or so ago, I'm sitting there worshiping the Lord and instantly this vision comes back like the very same one, the very same one. And as I'm looking at it, and the Lord just said, watch this. And I literally watched him roll like he was rolling this, like it was like the stone, you know, the, 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 tone, the tombstone around the, the tomb. 
I literally watched him rolling it all. Yeah. And I was like, and as he did, everything that had, that had been um, hidden was suddenly corrupt, that had been corrupted was exposed. Sorry. I could just see it so clearly. Um, it was just amazing. So when you were sharing what you were sharing, I felt like it was like the Lord's way of encouraging me. Look, you know, look, you, 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 there are others seeing this. There are others seeing this. There are others seeing this. And the fact that it happened, your vision happened to be about something that's behind me. I'm going to be like, nah, sorry, Sharon, you're not having, yeah. not having the picture taken down. <laughs> yeah, you might not have been popped up to share that if that wasn't behind me, brother. You know? <laughs> uh, uh, just, wow. Like, yeah, it's amazing. I, it totally is. And, and, and it's something that um, D and I, Dion and I were talking about when we did our podcast together um, was that, you know, God is dismantling the systems of religion. God is bringing down the idols. God is bringing down all these things. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like everybody loves, everybody loves it when a prophet comes up with an encouraging, uplifting, wonderful word. And don't get me wrong, brother, we need that. But what we seem to forget when we read Jeremiah, sometimes prophets speak to things that have got to come down. Sometimes prophets speak to things that have got to be uprooted. And that is the nature of the true prophet um, office. There are things that sometimes need to be called out for what they are, you know, and that didn't change after Jesus. You know, Jesus's New Testament prophets didn't suddenly become just all about, you know, light and fluffy and fairy and lovely and wonderful. You know, the the true voice (laughs) is going to call out what needs to be called out. That's it. Simple as that. And the other thing that we were talking about last night is that there are a lot of um, false voices around and people need to be discerning. And the only way you can really be discerning is to know the voice, the true voice, Jesus. Amen. It was one of the things that he showed me is that um, there is really only one way into the kingdom of God. And that's through the cross of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross and the blood. You know what I mean? There's no other way. And the only way into the kingdom of God is total surrender, you know, because um, it's not about what you and I can do to enter the kingdom of God. It's about what he already done. It's all about it's all about what he already done, you know, and that's something that he that he shared with me last year, which really started to change my life in a big way, you know, that we already have access, you know, that we already have access. And when when he died on the cross, I love the way that the gospel writers record what they recorded because each and every one of them recorded the cross in a slightly different way, same story, just slightly different way. And I think it was the Matthew Gospel of Matthew where he actually records that, you know, Jesus said it is finished, but then he actually recorded that he gave up his spirit. And if you read it right after that, you see that the veil in the temple was ripped in two from the top to the bottom. And suddenly it dawned on me. It was his breath that ripped that veil in two because it was now empowered by the blood that said it had finished. So what had finished is the separation is now ended. It's finished you now have full access and his breath empowered by his blood literally is the thing that ripped that veil in two from, it was, it was a pretty big veil. That's how power and the whole ground shook. And, yep. and that's the thing that, um, that I'm just so passionate about Joel, you know, and, and that's just seeing shame lifted off people. Like even just in the home church that we've got, we've got a lovely young couple that come along, and when I was talking to her about this even the other day, she said, you mean I've really got a tape place at the table? She couldn't get it. She's like, it really wants to hear from me. And this is a girl <laughs> who grew up in the church. And this is a girl who's you know, only ever known legalism as a child. I mean, she's, you know, she's getting free. You know, God, the Lord's really beginning to, you know, expose some of these lies. But, and I'm just so excited because um, I can see so clearly that, you know, people are getting freedom that they've never had before. People who've been a Christian like yourself have never been able, like, they've never known this kind of freedom before. And I, I, yeah, I just think that's really exciting, mate. I think that's really wonderful. Um, people are really beginning to discover the father heart of God uh, in, a, in, a, in an amazing way. You know what I mean? This young lady, Cody, she's, you know, she had a very difficult um, time um, and um, upbringing with her first biological father and a stepfather and but you know god is greater than all that you know god can minister to those hurts god can actually begin to reveal himself and he and and the way he he can also do it is through people like me and sharon that want to be family to people who have no family we prayed that every day last year i know because i actually said to my wife i said 
you know what I'm praying for? She goes, what? I says, I'm praying God will make us a family to those who have no family. And she went, yeah, me too. And I had no idea what she was doing, <laughs> you know? Wow. And, and ever since we've met Marco and Cody, we've just told them, look, we're family. We're your family and that's it. And they kind of looked at us a bit because it was a real buzzword around when I was growing up. Um, you know, like I got, well, I got saved as a 20 year old. I used to hear it all the time. Oh, we're family. And I could hear it from the pulpit and it sounds good, you know, but do you really mean it? And the way you mean it is by what you just said, does your heart reflect that in your life? Because, you know, being family means exactly that. We, you know, if we're family, then we're family. We're not, going to be like family <laughs> we are <laughs> you know what i mean um, you know what i mean and and that's really um what jesus is what jesus was getting across to his disciples at the um at the passover table brother is you know you're my family you are my family and i didn't know this joel but the other day he's speaking to my heart again he says do you know there was women and children at my passover and i went no i didn't know that honestly i did not know that and i went Lord, no offense, but if this is really you, can you help me? Because I'm going to get challenged on this. And so I, what we tend to forget is that Jesus was a Jew. So he was celebrating the Passover as a Jewish person. Now, the way the Jewish people celebrated the Passover, called the Cedar, is with women and children. And there was a whole way they went about it. And there was like different types of parts of the ritual that they did. And there was um, there's one particular thing where the women light the candles. There's two candles didn't know any of this and the women are usually given the honor to do that and i thought where is that in my king james english bible i don't remember reading about that you know but it's true and so when he actually said to them you know this is the covenant of my blood what he's basically saying to them is that you know i give you my blood so you are my family you are my family now and um he testified he literally testified to the reality of that on the cross and what do i mean by that when he hung on the cross and he's looking at his mother, Mary, and his disciple whom he loved, which we're pretty sure is John, right? And he said to mother, his mother, he says, mother, there's your son, and son, there's your mother. I've always thought, how kind, how loving, what an amazing loving act. He wanted to make sure his mum was taken care of because he knew. But the thing is, Joel, he knew he was going to rise again. So why would he even say that? He was saying that to them because he's testifying to the reality of you are now bonded by my blood. You're now my family. You now share my DNA. That's what he was saying to him. Wow. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, because he, and because I would never really occurred to me before. So what he was, what he's been saying to me, what he's been sharing with me that, you know, when we take communion, when we, when we actually take the bread and the, uh, and, and the blood of Jesus, um, we're actually testifying to the reality of what's on the inside of us, that we are now part of the DNA of Christ, that we are now in first love with him and that we are literally family. And so that's what I believe he's really beginning to bring us into more and more and more. And I mean, I, I, I know um, where I live and I know from talking to other people like yourself in America, there's such a, a yearning and a desiring and a longing to be genuine family. I could, I, I, people just want to gather together. They just want to be aligned. I know, I know I keep repeating that word, but that is just so much what's happening right now, aligned together. People want to be aligned together. You know, they just, and one of the, one of the visions, well, the vision rather for the media ministry, Joel, I'll just share that with you now is when he gave me this, this vision, what the, vi the vision that he actually gave me is that he wanted me to connect up with other churches, other ministries um, who wanted to be a voice on media, wanted to like broadcast in some way. And, uh, that started to happen actually. And, and each of the people that wanted to be part of it would have their own kind of um, emphases. For example, there's a guy named Jeffrey in Florida and he wants to do a podcast on emotional intelligence in business. Um, how you can turn your profit, your passion into your profit. He's a real kingdom entrepreneurial type of guy. And the, uh, another lady, um, Elizabeth, she wants to do one called water into wine. because Jesus changed the water into the wine. And so she's going to share on prophetic teachings and topics and, and um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll just throw that out there. Have you, have you ever considered doing anything in media or voice or like, I don't know why, mate, but I just felt I needed to ask you that question. Oh, that comes I, from I, don't, I don't, I just, <clears throat> I just share, I just share his heart through mine. Um, 
I never really stopped to say, hey, share this topic or share this one. You know, it's yeah, same. whatever he's thinking about, whatever he puts on my heart and whoever's there, whoever he's drawing me to, whoever he says, go speak to that person. You know, I do it and I just share, you know, his love with with that person and what he's telling me to share with them. I never stop to say, hey, it's this topic or that. And it can be, but I never, I don't want to say this with, with without, I don't want to say this because I don't want it to be a disrespect to because it's not, no, no. but I never limited him. I never limited him onto what it was that he wanted to share with somebody. Yeah. Well, I mean, even if, even if you'd like to come on as a guest occasionally, that would be great, mate. You know, like if you just want to come on and just share something that's on your heart, I've done that with Dion. Dion doesn't have a podcast in her own right. She used to, but she doesn't yeah. now. And like during the week, her and I were talking about a few different things and she said, Chris, we need to get together and, uh, and do a podcast about this. And I, I just felt really strongly, and so did she, um, that we should do it, you know, um, for Ross Hashina. And so we did and we obeyed the Lord and we followed that up. So that's all I kind of meant because, um, yeah, I mean, not everyone wants to do a podcast, but I just felt like God connected me up with you for a reason and um, that reason could just be something as simple as you might want to come to me one day and say, Hey brother, I've got something I want to share. Do you want to, you know, it could be just something like that. Absolutely. I mean, I never actually intended to do anything media. <laughs> I never intended to do anything <laughs> radio. I had no intention whatsoever. Yeah. It was hard enough for me to get up in front of the people of my fellowship at the time and grab a mic. I didn't want to do that. I was terrified. I just didn't want to. Oh, I liked one-on-one. I like, like talking to you. Like, I loved it. You know, I used to be able yeah, to yeah. coffee with someone. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I just loved the one-on-one. I was so happy in that space, right? But God kind of good at putting you yeah. in your comfort zone. And so, I mean, I just started grabbing the mic. And then one day um, I found out that the church I was going to was doing like their own radio hour once a week. And the lady that headed it up came up to me one day and says, oh, Chris, would you like to come up and share your testimony? I mean, like, yeah, man, I love sharing my testimony. I'll do it anywhere with anyone any time, right? Pretty scary, but <laughs> it was pretty scary. <clears throat> and I got over that and she says, oh, would you like to come on board? And I went, yeah. And, the, and I prayed about it and I felt like a real green light, you know. And the next thing I know, I'm doing the training and I'm, you know, like a regular presenter with her. And I kind of look back on mm-hmm. that now. And it's, I love the way the Lord works because he doesn't give you the big picture. Because if he had said to me, no. I'm going to get you, get you to start a media ministry, I would have gone the opposite way. I would have done a Jonah, brother, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say I get that. But just, you know, just be open to the Lord and where he wants to take your voice, brother, because you have definitely got a voice and something that people need to hear. And look, and if I can facilitate that as a guest or just, you know, I mean, obviously you're sharing things on Authentic Voices now, which is fantastic. Um, just throw that open to you, mate. Eh? No problem. Okay, so if uh, then just so that I can understand, um, <clears throat> if let's say the Lord talks to me and speaks something to me, and I really feel led to share it, um, I need to come to you and share that that word or that vision or dream, whatever it is that He's telling me to share. That I, and I share with you and, you know, at your discretion, because I, I feel like, you know, with respect and honor to you, this is the ministry God has called you and he's placed you at that position to to distribute, you know, and 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 move the people into specific, you know, areas as they need to or whatever it is they're sharing. So I just wanted to know. You know, if I share something that I feel really God is leading me to share, I want to share it with you. And at your discretion, you say, hey, yeah, go ahead and share it. Or, or no, maybe not at this time. Maybe we have to wait because that's a weighty word or, or whatever it is. You know, I'll respect that and, um, and I'll honor that as well. And in the event that you say, hey, yeah, go ahead and share that. Um, I guess I'm really leaning on you as to as to how I would share that. Would I share it in, in just as I'm sharing now, just writing it, or would it be something that you say, "Hey, I really want you to go live on a podcast with me, or or, or radio, or whatever that is." I, I'm trying to lean off of you and understand in what form and what way at that time you would want to to bring that word or vision or whatever from the Lord. 
Oh, I'll, I'll, okay. Well, I'll start off first of all by saying that um, I believe that Susan connected you and me for a reason, and when she did, um, I was, you know, I just thought, okay. Um, I mean, the second time she's the second time she's done this. So first of all, I, now look, I just want to qualify. Um, you know, I'm not the kind of person that wants to filter you. There are people who share things in my group that they share when they want to share, when they feel led by the Lord. And there are people that share live videos, you know, and you're right, brother. I don't give this permission to everyone, but I feel like with you that I can. And the reason why I feel like that I can with you is because there is a connection there and there is like a, um, a like mindedness. There's, there's just such a heart connection for me and a real, a real clear green light from the Lord. Um, I'd put it this way. I don't feel like I need to protect people from your brother. It's all good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, you know, not even, not even close. And I don't want, I don't want um, my media online church to be about that. But I do believe as a shepherd, you know, that you do have to have, and this doesn't apply to your job, by the way, but you do have to have some discernment and wisdom about who comes in. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. I don't have a, it's not a public group anymore. People can find authentic voices, but they have to apply to join. Having said that, there is a public page. I don't know how well you know Facebook, but there is actually a public page that runs in front of the group. So people can find us, people can connect to us, people can join if they want. And that's not a problem at all. And I want people to be able to find us. I want the public to be able to connect up with us. But I'm not going to just go, oh yeah, come on into the group. Um, I'm very discerning. I'm very prayerful. Again, this doesn't apply to your job. Just telling you where I'm at. I'm very careful. I'm very discerning about who joins the group because oh, a little while ago, I was nearly ready to shut everything down again because I was under such attack. <clears throat> One of the things that happened was as I, as, as I actually started to come out of this um, heaviness and you know dealing with it, the Holy Spirit said, it's time to clear house. Okay, what do I do? So he, he led me to my group membership list and I got rid of about 20 people because I just knew that they weren't what they appeared to be. And the whole idea about authentic voices is that I wanted it to be a community. I wanted it to be a safe place. I wanted it to be a place where people can share words, but it's not, it's not an exclusive thing at all. I want people to come in, but I also have to be conscious of the fact that there are other people who, you know, don't necessarily need to hear some of the rubbish that's out there. And, uh, but just so you're clear, I have a confidence and a peace with you. And so what I'm getting at is, there are people who have recorded a live word um, like Travis and just put it in. There are people who um, type out something and just put it in. In fact, if anything, um, I'm very encouraged because, you know, one of the things that I was trying to address when I was reviewing my list is this isn't a Chris boys show. I want people to contribute. I want people to post. I want people to share their hearts, you know? So that just clears that point up. But what I meant by um, the other thing was, if you feel like you know, um, Dion did that you want to do something together, just reach out to me. But that's not a condition, by the way. <laughs> that's not, oh, if you're not going to do a podcast with me, then you can't post, Joel. See you later. <laughs> that's not it. <at> <laughs> right. Why would why wouldn't I? I love you, man. Yeah. Oh, no worries. You know what I mean? just wanted to be clear. <laughs> that's all it is. And it's really just because I love the by flow. I love, you know, like um one of the things that the Lord really showed me for a friend um, and it really blew me away when I saw this because there's a scripture, I think it's in Proverbs where it says iron sharpens iron. And what I, well, I've always seen that as conflict. That's not what it's saying because iron actually excites iron. And when your iron rubs against iron, sparks come up. And when Woo! sparks come up, fire can actually start. <laughs> right? So it's like, Oh, so, so if iron is sharpening iron, that means you've got two like-minded people who've got similar hearts, similar journeys, similar anointings, and the sparks fly. And that means the fire comes. And that's why, oh, that's all I meant by if you ever feel like, hey, man, I want to do something with my brother, Chris, just reach out, mate. That's all I meant. That's all I meant. You know what I mean? Um, but that's not, a, that's not a condition by any means or any stretch of the imagination, you know? And to be honest. I appreciate I appreciate you really clearing and clarifying, you know, what you're saying, because it, it's, it's resonating in my heart very clear, too. You know, as you said before, I just, I wanted to stay in the cave, but, you know, <laughs> when God told me it's time, he said, it's time to share your story for my glory. 
Amen. And I'm like, man, God, you got to help me because yeah. I would just rather be with you, you know, and yep. just yep. you and me and you tell me here, this and that. But yep. I've always, and I say this and I don't, I don't want to be mean, but I want to be real at the same time. Yeah. I was raised in the church. So I saw a lot of things and yes. Yes. I saw how things weren't as they say it is. And, and I'm like, man, I don't want to go there. I just, <laughs> I, you know, I know what we have is real God, you know, yeah. what you've given me and, and who I am with you, it's real. So there's no, Hey, I want to elevate my name. It's not me. I want to elevate you. Yeah, and so it was kind of nervous a little bit connecting to you but then at the same time it was kind of like a you know that that link like linking together you know <laughs> yep. two pieces coming together and, and locking in place and yeah, and uh and sharing his heart yeah. and and you know what i really love about you is that as many people as come to you you're able to not only discern but you're able to allow that person to operate in in the anointing God's place on their life and that gift and and you don't really you're there if you need to filter like you said and you're able to go like that like hey I'm gonna you know I see this on you I see that the Holy Spirit's telling me to do that and so that's one aspect of of your character and who you are that I really love because a lot of times we're not able to always see that right away with so much coming in. You're not able, some of us are not able to say, Hey, I can do that. I can do that. You know, it's, it, we want to elevate his name, but you have a voice too. You have a voice, you have a part, you have a part wow. and finding that part and finding that place in him and where the two connect. Mm-hmm. so that his his voice resonates even louder through us oh that's what you it, know i really yes. i really love that about you. <laughs> you're hearing me man you're hearing me you're hearing me loud and clear and and that's something that i never even considered joel up until about oh probably about a month ago that he really has um raised me up to be a father an apostolic father i didn't even realize it and that, that, and that and a true apostolic father just wants to see christ in you the hope of glory come through right that's what Paul wrote. Mm-hmm. Oh, he says Christ, in, he right. was literally speaking to the Christ in them, which is Christ as you, by the way. Your authentic self is Christ in you, the hope of glory coming through. That's exactly what he was saying. He just wants to see Christ in them as them come through. Your best expression of who you are is Christ as you, in you. You know what I mean? And so that's 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 something that, yeah, I mean, but just going back to that point you made earlier, because it was a really good one. Yes, bro, I've seen all the excesses and abuses, mate. I've seen the legalism. I've seen the control. I've seen the, you're not going up the front till two people have heard what you got to say first. Yeah, I've been part of that as well. <laughs> That's not happening. That's why, you know, when I've got that discernment, when I've got that green light, when I've got that thing from the Holy Spirit that says, yeah, this guy's good. I want you to meet him. No worries. And it's like, you can feel the click. I mean, I could feel the connection. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what authentic voices is meant to be all about. You know, people that I feel some kind of in connection with people that I feel like some kind of engagement with people who I feel are, a, you know, a genuine voice. And I, can I just say it like this? My fellow cave dwellers who didn't want to come out of their cave. <laughs> I was crying when you said that. You're like, it's time. It's time, Joel. And I'm like, he's saying the same thing you're saying, yeah. Lord. I, oh, hear you. I, know, I, know. I know what you went through because I'll tell you what, I didn't want to come out. I didn't want to. One of my pastors um, used to said to me, he said, Chris, Chris doesn't, God doesn't want you hiding behind the curtain. And I went, yeah, but I'm happy at behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm here, yeah. and, and 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 the people in my home church are exactly the same, Joel. They're all cave dwellers. They're all like, man, we're happy. Now we're doing our thing. We're loving Jesus. <laughs> we're ministering to Him, and uh, we're happy where we are, man. You know, like you know, can't we just stay in the cave? Uh, well, Elijah couldn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if God doesn't want, if God, if God wasn't going to let Elijah stay in the land, you really think He's going to let you stay there? No, I don't think so. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's true. yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, but you know, you also, I'm also conscious of the fact, and I hope you don't mind me sharing my heart. There are Jezebels, mate. There are people out there who will yeah. who will try and infiltrate, and uh, they're not what they appear to be. And I'm on guard. You know, God calls me to be a shepherd. He expects me to be on guard with him. 
and I am on guard. That doesn't mean I'm paranoid, Joel. Don't, don't, please hear my heart. Um, but I take comfort in the fact that my wife has amazing discernment and they, my, my, one of my board members and friend, Elsie, she's, a, she's an intercessor. And I don't say that word lightly because a lot of people call themselves intercessor, but she's a genuine intercessor, see her. And my wife's got this amazing ability. She'll spot a Jezebel a mile away. I mean, one particular time we were in church, we met this lady and she seemed fine to me. And Sharon goes, no, I don't like her. I went, she didn't do anything. <laughs> and she goes, no, I don't like her. I said, but she, what did she, do? she didn't do anything. She says, I'm telling you, I don't like her. And I tried to warn one of the leaders in the church because I've grown to trust. Because when we first got married, she said to me, I don't like that guy. This is the guy I was about to go on business with. He'd done nothing wrong. Seriously, nothing. She goes, don't do it. And I did. And he burnt me. So ever since then, I listened to my wife and she says, no, nah, I'm not sure about this one. And so I warned one of the leaders in the church and he says, oh, no, nah, she's fine. Six months later, they nearly kicked her out of the church, brother, because of the stuff that she was doing and the people that she was pitting one up against the other. And, uh, and I just went, yeah, I told you. He said, yeah, you did tell me. I said, my wife has amazing discernment. And aside from the actual obvious spiritual discernment, you know, aside from the fact that, you know, a gift of sermon is a beautiful thing. You know, if there's one thing I can confidently say about a woman like my wife, that's not manipulative, she can spot Jezebel's. If any, if there's anyone that can spot a woman that's manipulative, it's another woman that's not. That's one of the things I say, you know. So I take a lot of comfort yeah. from the yeah. fact that in my home church, you know, there is kind of like a guard around me. God's put that guard around me. But I'm also online very conscious of the fact that and Jezebel's not a just... But Jezebel is not even a female thing. A, ma a male can operate with the influence of this, of this spirit. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I'm also conscious of the fact that, <clears throat> you know, I'm also conscious of the fact that, um, you know, any kind of genuine uh, prophetic uh, voice, you know, is a target for the enemy, brother. And um, he'll, try and, he'll try and sow, he'll try and sow seed, seeds of like, dissension and he'll try and put people in there that aren't what they thought they were so when i prayerfully went over my list i kid you not at least two of them were witches mate i just kicked them out straight away um one particular woman had no reference wow. to christianity no cross nothing jesus no scriptures nothing i'm like what the because i was just too free and easy hey man you want to come to authentic voices come you know like i just like you know but wisdom came and discernment came and maturity came and uh because I just wanted to encourage people, mate. I just, you know, like um, one of the things the Lord spoke to me about last year, you know, was that he was going to align um, his remnant together and he was going to align his voices together and he's going to align his cave dwellers together. I've got to use that term now. And, um, and, and, and I actually, one of the churches I went out to, went up to, I actually prophesied it. I actually went up to the front and I actually spoke into the spirit realm. And I said, it's time to come out of the cave. And, I was, and, I was, and the Lord said to me, he says, I'm going to bring these cave dwellers out. He says, well, I kid you not, mate. This is what he said to me. He says, and I'm going to connect them up with you. He did. He definitely said this to me. This is 12 months ago. And the other thing he promised me was that he was going to bring his remnant together. Because as much as, as, much as we've loved being on the Lord, with the Lord, loving on the Lord, being with the Lord, it is a bit of a lonely place being a true voice. So I think it's pretty cool that he's connecting his voices up together now. Um, but in, in like, because we love being in the secret place, right? We do. We love. We're very happy in the secret place. No need for attention. No need for recognition. Um, but it can also be a bit lonely because you know. I said to someone, believe it or not, I do actually like people. <laughs> I do actually. Like people. I am a people person. I prefer to be around people. But no, no joking, Joel. The last oh, two years of my life, I've had had jobs that cause the opposite of that. Like the the job. The job that I had, um, where all you know the, the rainbow behind me, I was really happy in that job. I had my own office. I was on my own, and um, I remember. And, and then the things the Lord showed me and did with me during that time, even though I was on my own, was amazing. And then I got, then I I lost that job, and I ended up another job, where I work on my own, at home, like I'm on my own again. <laughs> and because I actually, I actually went for an interview for two different jobs. One was a job um, working for a healthcare provider in Perth amongst a team, you know, like a um, team of people. And I ended up getting this job. I mean, it's a great job. You get to work from home. I mean, it's a great job. Don't get me wrong. And I remember I said to the Lord one day, I went, you know, I do like people, right? <laughs> That's what I actually said. Uh, I said, you know, I do like people, but why do you keep putting me in jobs where 
I'm on my own all the time, you know? And he said, because I want you all to myself. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. And then that was like a year ago. And, and since then, what, what's been brought forth and what he's done and um, it's just been amazing. And, you know, like it could only have come if I was on my own with the Lord, you know, in a lot of ways. So I don't know why, but I'm prompted to say this again. You know, when you were praying for people in your recorded video and you were like, <laughs> such a powerful prayer, mate. I was looking and in the spirit, I could see this platform coming down. I could actually see it coming down. Like this just coming down, coming down, coming down. And that's why I said to you, I'm here for you. I don't know how that's going to take shape. That could just be you posting words. <laughs> it could just be you wanting to do like a video and send it into authentic voices. I don't know how that's going to take shape. All I would ask is that just realize that I'm here for you. And if the Holy Spirit ever says, I want you to talk a bit, Chris, about doing this or doing that. Just let me know. That's all, man. Wow. And, uh, and I really appreciate that because I really feel your heart is like a father. And that's why it makes me cry. Because it represents his heart yeah. in such a unique way that you're able to touch many hearts Thank you. with his heart and yours. Oh, and it makes me cry because I can feel his heart inside of you. And I feel you like a father. And I, I, don't, I don't even know you, but it's like I know you in the spirit, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and it makes me cry because that's what I really feel. Thank you, John. In my spirit and in yours is that you're a genuine father. And you really want to raise God's family to be everything that he wants them to be. And you're willing to put yourself in a position that you're going to take on many people and many voices and you're going to be able to lead them and help them in, in, in many ways. You're really stretching yourself. But I know you're not stretching yourself thin. That's the difference. You're stretching yourself to be an extension of who he is. And his arms length, because his arms are long and he's mighty to see and you're just being an extension of him, but also his heart you're carrying. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that. And I just want to say thanks for putting yourself there. But it was him who put you there, but it was a yes. He needed that yes from you, and you said yes. Even with all that you've been through, you said yes, God. You said your will, not mine. And even when you questioned him and you wondered why, he still had a resolve for everything you went through and he was still working it out for your good, but for his glory. Amen. So that you could bring his heart's desire to pass and that's his family. Because yes. that's what he's calling. He's calling his family back to be one. Thank you. And he's using many voices, but he's remembering who's the one voice that they need to listen to. Wow. Wow. Oh, I can feel the weight of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there, look, there, look, I'm not going to lie to you. There's been times when I've walked away, times that I've been sick of being misunderstood, times that I'm sick of being accused, times when it just feels like I'm knocking my head against a brick wall, times when I've had to go... Why, why, why? But I keep going to the back to the place that that you know he chose he chose to turn up in my room. He chose to come to me when I was not wanting to be on planet Earth anymore. And he chose to turn up in, in my room and he chose to look me in the eye and he said, You're not going anywhere, I've still got a job for you to do. And I, you know, like I keep going back to that and I keep thinking about that. And I keep thinking to myself, you know, I really shouldn't be alive anymore. I shouldn't be here anymore. I don't really have a legal right to be here anymore, except God, except God decided, no, you're not going anywhere, you know? And it, it's, it's something that, um, but brother, you freed me, mate. I've got no idea. You f Look, mate, I know the Lord did it through you, but you still did it. Your voice, your testimony still did it. Because one of the things, I mean, oh, mate, yes, I have had a tendency to spread myself thin. And I'll tell you why, Joel, because I was so frightened that when I stood before him on judgment day, 
I was not going to have completed my job. I was not going to have completed my task. You know, I, I just, I, I wanted, I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear. I want to hear. Well done, a good and faithful servant. You know, I wanted to hear that. And I just thought, well, if I work harder, if I do more, if I take on more projects, if I minister to more people, if I help more people, then, you know, I'm, I'm suring that up happening. I'm suring that up occurring. And uh, when you shared your testimony, and uh, I felt like even though I know the Lord was saying it to you, but I felt like he was also saying it to me. You can stand before me confidently. You don't have to worry whether or not you're going to complete the task in me because it's already finished. You know, it's already, it's already begun, but I'm going to finish the work that I've started in you. In other words, he, 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 oh. He always honors his name and it's his name. It's his name. It's because of his name that we are here. It's because of his name that we do what we do. It's because of his name, you know, that we are family and he can't betray his name. So he's going to finish the work that he's begun because it's his work. It's his design. And every architect finishes what he starts building. Amen. Every architect finishes what he starts building. And <laughs> so we are his craftsmanship, you know, and um, I just, I just honor you. And I just thank you for, for, for just, for just honoring me and acknowledging me because um, that, that is my heart, bro. You know, I want to, I, I, I'm going to, I'm a father and uh, I am a literal father as well. <laughs> but, and uh, but I just have such a longing and such a desire to see people come through to see people come forth, to see, in fact, can I just share something quick? I got into trouble with the Holy Spirit because I was so willing to, for other people to speak. I was so willing for other people to come forth. He come, <laughs> come to me one day, because like, even um, my very, very first live video that I ever did, <clears throat> we were going to have our first aligned meeting. And I'm thinking, who can I get to speak? And the Holy Spirit says, no, you speak. And I did <laughs> to do it right. Um, <laughs> And, he, and even, even, even recently, um, uh, I had a guy come guest speaker and I, and I said to Sharon, I said, I'm doing it again. She said, what? I said, I'm trying to stay in the background. I'm trying to elevate and promote and bring for other people forth. And, you know, and, and the Holy Spirit said to me, he says, no, you're my voice. You need to come voice and be my, be, be my voice. I'm sorry. He said, you need to come forth and be my voice too. And it was, it was a rebuke, a loving rebuke, but it was still a rebuke. In other words, stop trying to use, you know, the work of the ministry to hide. I didn't even realize I was doing it, but I was because I just don't want to be, <laughs> I don't want to be heard. I just want to, I'll, my, 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 my heart's desire is to see other people seen and see other people heard and see other people come through. I guess that's the heart of a father but sometimes the father needs to speak, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Sometimes the father needs to speak too. I'm speaking metaphorically, obviously, but, you know, like it's great to want other people to come through and to speak and to see them, you know, grow and, and be their voice for the Lord. But sometimes the father has to use father, you know, like building on what you just said. Sometimes the person with the father's heart, sometimes he needs to speak too is what I'm trying to get at. Sorry, but... So thank you for that. I, I, I really, I really, I really meant a lot. Appreciate <laughs> You're welcome. I can, I can feel his heart and even, even the beats, even the patterns of his heart in yours, you know? Really? And, and it's not like every single beat of yours, but it, it's, it, I can, I can catch it at times in the spirit. You know what I mean? Wow. And it's because he's allowing me to let, let me see that so that you would know that. Not because I'm saying it, because he's saying it through one of his voice so that you know it's him, yeah. you know? Yeah. Oh. That's all it is. It's, it's, it's him. He's letting you know that. Even when you've doubted yourself sometimes or you question it, no, you still carry my heart, Chris. You still carry my heart, Chris. And I wanted to remind you that even when I had to use one of my own to speak through, speak through to speak to you, to remind you that you still carry my heart with so many voices. You're still a voice, and you carry my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Remember that. Remember that, because he loves you. When, when, uh, when you were speaking, wow. 
Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm allowed to say it now. When you were speaking, standing behind you, I saw Jesus standing behind you. Really? I saw Jesus standing behind you. Oh, wow. He was all in white, and his hand was on your shoulder. But he really? didn't have anyone like this. <laughs> quiet. He told me quiet. And I'm listening to you, and his hand oh, was on your shoulder, it. but he didn't let me tell you. And he's like, tell him now. So he knows that, I, that he's close to me and that I'm close to him. So he knows it. This is what he told me. Uh-huh. And that's what he showed me where you, but him, him behind you on your back with his, with his hand, just simply on your shoulder like that. Yes, but man. the other hand, he went like this to me. And he's like, as if <laughs> not time yet, wait. And that's all I did was like, okay, I'm, I'm trusting you, Jesus. I don't know. But then he was like, now you tell him so that he can know that I'm close to him and that he's close to me too. Praise the Lord. I've often, Even I've, if you don't feel it, because I know that you're a feeler, you feel things. Yeah. But even if you don't feel him, he said, I'll still be there with you because that's his word. Yes. That's his promise. That's who he is. Yes. Today, you know, I'm going to share something with you today. I didn't hear him at all today. And sometimes we question, did I do something, God? Did I do something wrong? Or what did I do? Or what didn't I do that I didn't hear you today? I didn't hear him at all. But it goes back to something that you said when you said, oh, sometimes we try to find ourselves by what we did or, or how God spoke to us or used us. And I just had to simply remember, you're with me. Even if I don't hear you right now, or if you're not speaking, which you probably are, maybe I'm not catching it. But even then, you're still with me. You know, and, and I'm saying this to you so that even when you don't feel him, or you don't hear him, remember that he's with you. Yeah, thank you. And just thank him. Thank you that you're with me. I don't feel you. I don't hear you. I'm praying and I need an answer. I'm going to wait for you. I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to wait for what you have to say. But I know that you're here. I know that you're with me because you said you are. Praise the Lord. And even if I don't see you, I know you're still here. Just be reminded of that. I know you say it to others too, <laughs> but at times, sometimes we have to tell it to ourselves and remember, speak to your heart and say, Jesus is with me because he is and yeah. he's with you. Yeah. I, I could feel like a duck <laughs> on my shoulder. I didn't realize, well, I was sort of focused on, you know, sharing with you and listening to you, but I didn't realize. <laughs> <That's just laughs> I have felt, I have felt a touch on my shoulder quite a few times and, um, I have, there has been a couple of occasions when I've been ministering to others and I could feel him touch on my shoulder and he was actually saying things to me about this person, but it's never been just for me. So that's pretty, pretty, that's pretty special. <laughs> and the, the, the thing, like, uh, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, obviously, you know, you'd probably know the story of Joseph and, um, Oh, many years ago, I saw a film adaptation of the story. And there's a particular part in the song where he's just been thrown into prison. And he's, um, the film adaptation has a song called um, You Know Better Than I. And I'd completely forgotten about this song. And so when I was really copping it hard, Joel, last year, and I'd been forced out of the job that I enjoyed for many different ways and reasons, uh, I mean, the very people that were on my side that were for me, like the CEO and the HR manager, they were against me. Very same people. And uh, the people that were for me and had me on radio and in leadership, and I was part of church plants and everything, they were against me. And so like, all these people were just against me, against me. And um, obviously, you know, the question pops up, why? Why? And uh, i got no doubt in my mind, you know, that, um, I mean, because to a large extent, everything about what I dreamed, everything about what I wanted to do, everything about that I felt about what God was going to do in my life since the age of 20. I mean, I was 51 last year. It was looking like it was coming true. It really was. And now the complete opposite of all this was happening. And so I'm thinking about this and I'm just, I was crushed, mate. Like, why? Why? You know, and, you know, 2018, I mean, that's only two years after my mental breakdown, Joel. So this nearly sent me back over the edge again. And uh, I, I hung on in that rainbow that I saw a rainbow and uh, this particular, um, some, for some reason, I just started thinking about this film. It's made by DreamWorks Entertainment, you know, and I kept thinking about this song 
this movie, this adaptation. And I didn't know why. And I was talking to Sharon about it. And I went, Lord, I don't know what it, I want to find it. How do I find it? And he actually helped me find it. And uh, it's actually on YouTube. I'll send you a link. And uh, okay. this Please. song, this, the, the song and the, the words in the song, because it's coming from when he's in prison. And he's like, and this, the words of the song, it says, I've let go the need to know why, because you know better than I. And I hung on to that, you know, like I really, really hung on to that because he told me to start a podcast and help me and find their voice. And I had anything and everything that could be thrown against me. People turned against me who were once for me, false accusations. Sharon and I got accused of things. We still don't know what we've done to this day. No one's told us. Um, so I just hung on to that. You know, you know better than I. I kept seeing rainbows, you know, like, wow. and I just kept seeing rainbows. And he told, was, was talking to me about Joseph. And I remember at the time, I remember at the time my pastor, uh, Rafael, said to me, he said, you know, sometimes Chris to go, sometimes God will take you sideways before he takes you up ways. And, uh, <laughs> and I thought about, and I thought about um, Joseph a lot during those times. And the thing that the Lord spoke to me about, which was, really really interesting was that um in in the very circumstances of joseph's life right and the very people joseph ended up with in prison he ended up having conversations with these people and interpreting their dreams so what i'm getting at is the very people in the very circumstances of his life that he had conversations with were the ones that got him the um appointment with pharaoh so what God was showing to me is like the very people in your life, the very circumstances in your life, the very things that are going on in your life, just stay close to my heart and you'll see how I'm going to use those people. You'll see how I'm going to use those circumstances. Just like Joseph. I'm not saying I'm going to have an appointment with Pharaoh. I'm just going to make a point. Um, that, you know, God will elevate you if you humble yourself and you just let go of the need to know why. And you just trust that he's with you. You don't have to understand it. It doesn't need to make sense. Um, you know, but just trust that he's, because my heart was broken, Joel. I mean, I, I had a great job. I was doing well. I was helping church plants. I was on radio. I mean, I mean, my heart was broken. My first thought was, what have I done wrong? Did I let you down, God? Did I do something to upset you? What, why is this happening to me? And I, you know, Joel, he must've been, Joseph must've been thinking the same thing. Surely he must've wrestled with some stuff. Um, but he was faithful, man. He was faithful. He, he, he made up his mind, you know, I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to, and he honored the jailer and he just, and that's all God asks of us is that, you know, we just trust him. Eh? We just trust him. We know that he's with us. We know that he's there. Um, and, and because one thing I do know uh, when I look back on my last year is, you know, he used my pain for a purpose. He, he, he used my pain for a purpose and he birthed out of me something that's resulted in me talking to you right now that's true you know? and so um you know it's just oh it's just, it's just <laughs> right I'm just, i can't i don't even have any more words to speak which is unusual for me ask anyone <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> I don't, no, you, know? you know it's uh and, and you know i like that we could be transparent with one another and be real mm -hmm. And it's like, I kind of feel like, you know, you need a hug and then you lean, you're leaning on me, like putting your head just here and just, you know, just, Hey, just hug me, you know? And it's like an embrace, but like a brotherly embrace, but also the respect, Hey, you know, that there you're speaking to a father, but still the embrace doesn't change. Awesome. You know, the love doesn't change. You know, you don't, you don't love someone differently because, you know, their father, their child, the love is genuine. The love is real. And that's what I'm getting at is that you know I, I see your love is genuine it's real and you don't you sh share the father's heart and you share that of a father's heart in, in and of yourself yet the love is real and it's genuine and you love everyone that way whether that's a child whether it's a daughter you love them that way mm -hmm. you know you don't just say hey i'm a father you know love me the same way no no you don't do that you just love freely yeah. and it shows it shows oh in your heart, in your life, in your perspective, in your thoughts, how you carry yourself. In every aspect of your life, that father's heart is revealed. 
and you love people genuinely, regardless of their title or their anointing, their position, you love them with a genuine love and you're still carry the father's heart. Yeah, that's true. And, and I'm also vulnerable to people that I love um, as a father, like Cody and like I've shared with her, my struggles I've shared with her, my doubts and, I don't feel the need to be one of these leaders. Like I don't, I don't want you to know about my struggles. No, 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 no. No, you can't know about my struggles because somehow what that's a, that's, that's an, that's a sign of weakness. I disagree. You know, because the word of God says to me that his strength is made perfect in my weakness. And so if I'm being genuine and real and, and honest with my weaknesses, if I'm showing you that I, I'm, you know, I'm letting Jesus be made perfect in my weaknesses, then isn't that a greater testimony? Doesn't that give Amen. you hope and encouragement? <laughs> well, hey man, if you if you're if you're if you're struggling with that stuff, and you're and you know you're trying to lean on the Lord to get you through that stuff, then that means I I can do the same. Well, that's what I want. Yes, I don't want to people to think that I'm not struggling and I'm I'm strong and victorious and hallelujah. It's all rubbish, mate. I don't. That's just got to go out of the body of Christ because it's time for it to leave. You know, we need to be the same at home. In, in the marketplace or wherever we are, you know, God, 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 God is just not happy with these men that are treating their wives like crap and it got a big public platform. I'm telling you now he's dealing with that because it's not on, it's not on. There's got to be an authenticity and a genuineness and there's got to be integrity. Integrity has got to come back. It's so important that, that integrity comes back and integrity means that, you know what, I've got struggles too. And then my dad used to quite often share his struggles with me, you know, like I battled with that stuff too, son, you know, I did, and he says, you know, I'm gonna, and you look at him and you go, what? Um, well, you know, just because um, I'm older than you or just because I'm further in the Lord or means nothing. Doesn't, doesn't mean anything, you know, because, um, you know, we're all um, flesh and blood and we're all need, in need of mercy and we're all in need of grace and every single one of us, you know, every single one of us are in need of that. Amen. And uh, yeah, and I, I, I mean, I just, I just, I see that. That's one of the things I love about Apostle Paul's writing because you see that in his writings, you see that humility, you see that grace that's coming through with him constantly. He's never elevating himself. He's never saying he's better than you. You know, he's constantly talking about his. his you know, how he, he refers to something called a thorn in his side. That's pretty transparent, right? That's pretty, you know honest and genuine a leader to be is, you know, like I've got a thorn in my side, guys. I've asked God to get rid of it three times and he hasn't done it yet. You know, I mean, that's pretty genuine. Uh, and that's what yeah. I see when I see the writings of Paul and John and James and Peter, the whole lot of them. They're always writing with a genuineness and authenticness and a humility and, uh, you know, always basically saying, you know, like Jesus, basically, they're constantly referring back to Jesus is what they're doing and saying, you know, and, all the writings, all the things they're correcting, they're always pointing things back to Jesus. They're pointing everyone back to Jesus. That's how I interpret scripture. Um, you know, that, that even the apostles, you know, the, 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 the apostles that write, wrote the letters of the, of the Bible that we enjoy and read today. You see that to me, that's how, that's the lens I've got anyway, from the father's heart. They had weaknesses <laughs> and struggles. They wrote about those weaknesses and struggles. They didn't hide them from the people that they were pastoring or being apostles to. Amen. And um, that's the kind of genuineness and authenticness that I believe is, is coming through today. And that's what I believe he's restoring. And I believe that, you know, that really is the spirit and power of Elijah. There's nothing more glorious and more wonderful to the father than seeing us act like family, be family, I believe. And, um, you know, because the thing is, right. Or because that the thing is, Oh, sorry. I I didn't even know I was going to go here, but I will. The thing is uh, (laughs) with Elijah, you know, he proved, to the prophets of Baal and the children of Israel, who the real God was with the fire demonstration, but it didn't change the hearts, Joel. It didn't change the hearts because if it had of Jezebel would have been overthrown. The Baal structures would have been torn down overnight. It would have changed everything. But as you, but, but if the heart doesn't change, nothing changes on the outside of the heart. And that's um, something that I really believe that, that God was introducing to Joel. Why did, he, why did he put his mantle over his face? Because yeah, if you read it, two times God says, what doest thou here, Elijah? And I said to the Lord yesterday, I said, why did he put his mantle of his, over his face? He said, because he wanted to encounter more of my heart. Never seen that before. 
And I said, well, why did he whinge again? Because he did. <laughs> why, well, he, why did he say, you know, I've done everything you've asked me to do? Um, because he was wrestling. He was trying to understand. He was, because yeah, a mantle is something that comes from God. So when he's covering his face with his mantle, he's actually covering himself with more of God. Amen. That's what he's doing. He's covering himself with more of God. In other words, he's showing me something new. And I want to get it, so give me more of you, you know. Perfect me in you. And um, and then he <laughs> says to him again, what do if thou hear Elijah? And I said, well, why did you ask him the same question again? He said, because I needed Elijah's full attention on my heart. I needed his complete attention on my heart. I needed him to know that I'm his father and I love him. Because it says he heard the still, small voice and he covered his face. And I've, all, I've been wondering for four years, what could... God have possibly have said to Elijah that caused him to cover his face, something he'd never heard before. Now we know God is love, so we know it must have been coming from a heart of love. We know that, right? And so if the Father heart of God is speaking to Elijah, right, and he's probably I just I just truly believe he just didn't know how to fathom it, mate, because everything that he knew about God was through Signs and wonders, mate. He changed the rain. He stopped the rain. He brought the rain back. Um, he fed the lady. He'd done miracles. He'd done signs. He'd done wonders. He didn't stop operating in that level, by the way, because we, we read in Kings that later on, you know how they, um, they sent those, those armies to him and he kept calling fire on them? Do you know that story? There's like twice. They get burned up by fire. You'd think that no wonder the third one were pretty scared and went, please don't set us fire. So he didn't stop operating with that level and that authority. Um, but he was encountering an aspect of God that he hadn't encountered before. And it so changed, changed him and it so defined him that, you know, he became two things, a father and a kingmaker. I don't, can't see any other record in scripture where he anointed someone to be king except Jehu because he actually was told, go and find a guy named Jehu and anoint him to be king. And what was interesting is Jehu was quite instrumental as king in, in dethroning Jezebel and pulling down the Baal structures and bringing people back to worship the Lord, their God. <clears throat> so he actually became a father and a kingmaker. Pretty significant change. Because up to that point, he was just the lone prophet going around. The great troubler of Israel is what King Ahab called him. <laughs> and uh, so now he's going to be a father to Elisha and a kingmaker. And this, I haven't quite got the full revelation on the kingmaker part. But the father heart of God was so transforming in Elijah that he was able to go to this guy named Elisha, knowing he was going to replace him and not the least bit threaten him. In fact, welcoming it. It's a pretty significant thing for a prophet to take a mantle off himself and throw it at the feet of the man who's going to replace him. That's pretty cool in my book, right? It's like no, in no way threatened by you, not in the slightest. That's pretty cool. <laughs> um, so it's just something in there. And I feel like, um, I feel like uh, that's kind of what's happening now is that, you know, God is calling leaders to, to raise them up to be true fathers to the point where they'll lay it all down at his feet. They'll lay it all down at his feet so they can see the sons, the true sons come forth now because that's what the father's heart is all about. And that's what he's, he's doing in so many leaders today, Joel, is he's actually purging out all the need for self-recognition he's purging out all the desire for attention. He's been, he did it with me, brother. I wanted to be ordained. I had a dream since I was 22 years old. I wanted to be ordained. I wanted to have a proper ordination and I wanted to be like a, a pastor. I wanted to be called pastor Chris. I wanted to marry people because you know, I, when I, when I was 22, I went to Bible college and I always used to love it. I always used to be jealous of the fact that every time a pastor did a wedding in Christian world, they usually got invited to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, how cool would that be? So that's, that dream was in me. That dream was in me for a long time. And so I had this dream where I'd be ordained, I'd be a pastor, I could, you know, marry people. Because, you know, I know I'm a bloke, brother, but I like weddings. I just like weddings, right? People laugh when I say that. Yeah. And, um, but uh, early this year, I had an powerful encounter with the, with the Lord. And um, he gave me two choices. And he showed me, the pathway of man-made religion, right? Uh, the whole idea of, you know, you've got to be ordained or you've got to have covering and you've got to have this. It's not scriptural at all. In fact, um, the only ordination I need is the one from heaven. Paul said, 
I am an apostle of Christ, which means Christ has made me an apostle. That's it. He didn't need the Sanhedrin to ordain him. So God is showing me, well, you can go this way if you want. Do you want this? And on the right-hand side, he's showing me family. He's showing me the new covenant. He's showing me the new wine. He's showing me the new thing that he's doing. I'm like, yeah, right. That's a no-brainer. But it cost me, brother, because I had to um, walk away from being ordained. I had to walk away from being like a pastor that's ordained and being able to marry people. And I don't regret doing it. <clears throat> but what God got out of me was this need for recognition, this need for approval, this need for validation. Because that, that, as long as that's inside of you, you're going to be threatened by people who might have this anointing on you that you might think is a greater anointing or you might... And I've seen demonstrations of that. I'm not trying to be critical, but I have seen demonstrations of that. And I actually have been experience, had experiences with that. And um, I just really believe there's a real new breed of leadership coming through that's everything you just described as a father's heart, everything about what Elijah had in his heart is just like, I'm not threatened by you. I welcome you. I embrace you. I would, nothing would give me greater joy than to see you go on and do greater things in me. That is the heart of a father. That is exactly what Elijah had become. That is, that's why in Malachi, it actually records, if you look at it, he's restoring the hearts of the fathers to the sons. That's not just talking about literal biological fathers and sons and families and stuff like that. That's talking about sons knowing the true father heart of God through fathers, you know, leaders, spiritual leaders, I believe. And that's where the, um, that's where the reformation, if I can call it that, is coming from. Because God, God is revil, re, re, reviling, sorry. God is re, um, reviving. Um, he is restoring and he is reforming his body. He, he is reforming his body back to the original blueprint, back to what Adam and Eve had. Exactly the same thing. And, uh, but greater, brother, because Christ is, we are being restored into the image of Christ as the son of God, you know? So... I'm jumping around a bit here on you, sorry. But um, that's something that I'm really, really <laughs> passionate about is that, you know, the, the blood of Jesus, the DNA of Jesus, the DNA of Christ is in us. It's part of us. It's part of our DNA now. We just got to agree with it. If we agree with it, it changes us. It transforms us. That's the thing the Lord showed me about Roma. The very, very first time I ever got to preach after waiting for 30 years was on Romans 12, 1, 2. Because one day I was talking to the Lord. I went, so I'm not the one that transformed me, right? <laughs> I said, so who transforms me then? Who, tra who actually does it? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, it dawned on me, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's the one that transforms us because... And then he started giving me this really powerful revelation about the butterfly. And, he's, and I, I, he actually prompted me to do this. I'm convinced of it. And I looked up exactly how a caterpillar transforms into a butterfly, like detail, like you know, bit by bit by bit what actually occurs. <clears throat> and, and, and if you look back on the last year of 2020, you can see metamorphosis occurring because uh, with a butterfly, he goes into like a shutdown cocoon stage, right? And then the next thing that happens, everything begins to dismantle and crumble. Did not know that. Um, he actually, um, it becomes like a gooey mess. And the only thing that remains is a breathing tube. And I actually preached on this. I said, you know, even when things feel like they're falling apart in our lives, we still can praise God because we can still receive the breath of God. Amen. And it's actually the breath of God that transforms us. Because in the story of the butterfly, what actually happens is um, because everything is actually dismantled, it can now be reformed. And what actually occurs is there's, um, there's actually DNA inside of a butterfly, believe it or not, called imaginal cells. And what actually happens, it's quite a violent process, brother, when you actually look at it, even on a science video. But it's the actual process of everything dismantling and being disrupted that activates these things called imaginal cells that actually causes the transformation to occur. And you think, well, if that's all happening by design, if that's all happening to a blueprint, and that's just a butterfly, <laughs> how much more glorious is the revealing of the sons of God going to be, brother? Come on. <laughs> and it's the Holy Spirit that does it. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit that does it. Yep. Like, 
he is the architect. He is the designer. And all he says is, will you be, you know, will you trust me? You know, will you keep me as your first love? Will you worship me? You know, will you just keep praising me? Cause if there's one thing that I made up my mind in 2018, um, January, 2018, I had so many things being thrown at me, mate. Um, my son took off. Uh, he's got a disability. He stole a credit card. He just took off. I had so many things coming against me. But if there's one thing that I learned is that um, one thing the devil can never do, he can never stop me praising my God. That's it. Can't stop me. There's nothing the devil can do that stops us from praising our God. Amen. And it was because of that. He taught me how to fight, Joel. <laughs> Seriously. That's how he taught me how to fight. I made up my mind I was just going to keep praising. There's, there's, praising. Yeah. there's the warfare. Praise and worship. There's warfare in there. You know? You, it's fight. great worship. Great great praise and worship is, is great warfare against the enemy, you know? Amen. Amen. We think, sometimes people think, well, I'm not. You're not doing anything. Oh, well, you are. You're giving God glory. You're worshiping him. You're praising him. And you're and you're sending shackles and binding the kings and their nobles with chains and fetters of iron when you do it, you know. The Bible God. says that that's what we do. Our high praises. He says the high praises do that, you know. So when we praise God and we exalt His name and we give Him glory, even with all the things that we gone through, and and we just trust Him, you know, your life is is speaking about Him and giving Him glory. Look at look at my child. He's, he's gone through this, but his heart has not changed. Yeah. His heart has not changed. The enemy tried to crush him and see if his heart would change and he would go back to his old ways, but he didn't change. His heart was for me, and my heart is for him. So I'm going to transform not only him, but that whole situation to bring me glory. <laughs> he's amazing. Oh, absolutely. And, pe and the thing, the, the, the responses of people that see that range from, man, how did that happen? To jealousy, to, and I never understood that, right? I don't understand why people get jealous. I, I'm sorry, I just don't. Because the way I look at it is it's the same father. We belong to the same father. And, um, yeah. you know, we need, we, why, why even have jealousy? And so you try and share with them why this happened or why this occurred. and um, they, they kind of don't get it because they've got to do it. You know, like they've got to praise God when things are really hard and tough and they've got to stand on the word and they've got to agree with the word and they've got to, they've got to do that in the quiet place when no one's watching mate. you know, and, and that's, you know, that's not easy for people. And brother, I spent 30 years going around in the same circles. I spent 30 years going to conferences and meetings and, thinking if I went to a two day, three day conference and heard from some anointed man of God, my life would just change. Doesn't work like that. <laughs> just doesn't That's work true. like that. You know? um, and I, I mean, my, my wife hears it from me all the time, you know, and I remember one day the Lord really spoke to my heart. You know, he, he just did. I thought it was my thoughts. And then later I realized it was him speaking to me. And I, I got to the point where I said, I said, when are we going to stop? chasing the man and his anointing and realize the anointed one lives in me. When are we going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and then later on, I went, that was you Lord, wasn't it? And I could feel like this real smile. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I just knew it was him. And, uh, and, yeah. and I just thought, yeah, when are we, when are we going to start doing that? When are we going to, you know, why do we keep chasing the man and his anointing? Because I'll tell you why, because it's going to cost you something to get your own normal. Oh, mate, where did that come from? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't have to steal it because I just brought it. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> it's going to cost you something to get your own oil. And that might mean a sacrifice of praise. That might mean laying down something that he wants you to lay down. That might mean letting go of a relationship that's just not doing you any good. But at the end of the day, um, it's the oil that transformed and yet it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something uh, because, you know, we know that grace is free, but we still have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. Amen. That's true. You know, when I, when I was with my ex-wife, you know, she was, was resisting God and what God was wanting to do. Uh, not only in my life, but in hers, but she was resisting and resisting. And, and, and it was hard for me because I'm like, well, that's my wife, yeah. you know, and with everything that had happened in my life, with everything that happened in my life, 
I had to pray because the enemy was throwing that verse. Oh, God is not a God of divorce. And oh. he would always throw that at me and throw that at me, you know, and, and, it, and it was like soon enough, God began to explain to me the enemy knows my word and he twists it and he turns it. Yes. And um, it came down to, he, he spoke to me because, he said, you have a choice. Just like, you know, when you were saying how God gave you, you have a decision to make. He said, you have a choice. You can save your marriage and lose your soul or lose your marriage and save your soul. That's what he told me. Really? And I'm like, God, I know your word says it said salvation is independent. I can't save nobody. I can't even save myself. Yeah. I said, you're going to have to help me. And he said these words to me, I'm coming for you. I'm coming to help you and get you out of this marriage. And then he later on, he began to help, he began to help me and, and get out of that marriage. And then he began to tell me later, Hey, she was going to leave you down the road. And I'm like, wow. And not only that, as we were separating, it was confirmed not once, not twice, not three or three times, sorry, three times that she was unfaithful. And I like, I never saw it. And like, I, I received the word, but because I didn't see it, I didn't believe it. Yep, yep. But then God gave me a dream and I saw it. I was there. It happened. And then I woke up from the dream hurt and, uh, and crying. And, he said, and then I immediately heard him. He says, now you believe. Now you believe me when you saw it, when I spoke it to you by three of my prophets, I told you she was unfaithful to you. Wow. And now you believe, it. but I saved you. And he began to explain to me, I saved you from so much heartbreak, heartache and all kinds of stuff. She was going to leave you later. I'm like, Sorry. What? Sorry, I didn't hear and that. then he began to tell me, he began to tell me, he says, so many of my people put their marriage above me. Yeah. Marriage is from me, but it's not above me. Yeah. And he began to teach him like, whoa. Yeah. So oh, he man. taught me. He taught me about that, and I was like, wow. Even through that separation, he uses things that he doesn't like. Yep, yep. But he'll use it to bring something he loves. <sighs> and he'll bring, just like he used the death of his son, Jesus, the torture, the torment, all that. He hated that, but he used it to bring something he loves. And that was not just the transformation of his people, but the salvation of his people. So God, like, like, like you said, God can use anything and he will, even a divorce, even when the enemy throws that at you, well, God is not a God of divorce. He's not, but I can use it yes. to produce something I love. <laughs> and he, and he, look, he did, he did. And he did. I just um, wanted to share this quickly, mate. Um, yeah, my first uh, marriage ended in divorce and um, I went through the same agonization over scriptures and things like that. And it was just a, t a really tough, tough time. And there was a number of different things. The Holy Spirit showed me that, you know, he was with me. He was with me. Um, and I, I, I had to make the choice, but he was with me. And he confirmed that that choice was correct. Um, and there was a number of different ways that he did that. And one of the things that I thought was, oh, there's no way I can ever be a pastor or a minister because, you know, people won't let me be if I'm divorced. I know it's silly, but I was thinking along these lines at the time. And he connected me up with a brother that I hadn't seen for 15 years who had become a pastor even after divorce who was married to another woman, you know. And, uh, and, and he, he, um, he showed me through this brother that, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, yeah, he was with me. He, everything you just said was spot on. I just wanted to share that with you, mate. Um, that's all. Because he used something like that to bring something that he loved into my life. And I don't mean my wife because that came later. I mean, he did thin things in me. He developed me. He did some amazing things in me that um, really began to set the, the, really began to set the foundation for where I'm at, at today in a lot of ways, really. Um, and I, you know, um, I had a lot of growing and a lot of maturing to do since then, but yeah, mate, I'm, I'm here in your heart. I just wanted to say that. And just, I've got to go, mate. Cause <laughs> my friends have just arrived, but I'll just finish, finish off by saying, um, saying this. Um, one of the things that he taught me about marriage last year was, um, you know, uh, how it, be, it can become more important than him. You're absolutely right. And, um, one of the things that he taught me about being, he's taught me about marriage and husband, being a husband and 
and he's, he's really showed me the order. You know, there is actually like an order in the way that that's supposed to work. And so that's something that I'm very passionate about is marriage, you know, very, very passionate about it. But, um, you know, like I, I, I befriended a guy last year and he kind of saw me as a pastor for a while. And uh, he kept reflecting things to me about, and it was so obvious to me that this woman was a Jezebel, mate. I didn't say that to him, but I kept reflecting back to him, you know, what he was saying to me. And um, you could see that this was, this marriage was just destroying him. And even though he, and he was actually separated from her at the time. And it's just, it's a, it's a, you know, it, it's a tough one, mate. I, I remember when I was going through this, I thought to myself, I could go to 10 pastors and five of them will say, no way, you can't divorce her. Another five might go, well, that's your choice or something like that. And I thought at the end of the day, it's between me and God. You know? And I made that decision. And he, he, I look back on it now and I know he helped me. He definitely helped me with it. You know? And um, Amen. yeah, man, so I, I mean, I'm here anyway. mate. I, I was married to her for 12 years. I've got, I had three, two children to her and a stepchild. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to walk away from, you know? um, but, but I understand why you had to do it, mate. Don't worry. Cause I, I had to do it myself. You know? I had to do it myself. It's game. He's, a, he's our everything. He's, yeah. he's our everything. And if we choose something over him, he's a jealous God. Yeah. I'll totally, and he, totally. he can, he can bring that thing down or, or take it out of your life, you know, and he chose to, to take it out of my life and, and show me why, but it was, it was better that way because oh. it wasn't his plan. It was mine. Yeah, absolutely. And he showed me, it's, this is what you, yeah. this is what you wanted. You, you did something and, and I wasn't involved in that. Yep. But, you know, God is so merciful and so gracious that, like you said, he uses everything and he used that too. Because just like you said, I wouldn't be where I'm at if I was still there. That had to be removed. That had to, to go in order for the preparation and everything that God was doing in my life, mm -hmm. because that specific person didn't want to, didn't want to be part of that. Right. So yeah. it, that's like an anchor holding you back. That's what yeah. it was. It, really? it was an anchor. Not, I'm not trying to say bad about her, but she doesn't want that. She didn't want that. So that's, that's just an anchor, just holding you, holding you back, holding you down yep. from you really running and really in, encountering God. You know what I mean? I do, mate. And I do. That's what I said to Adam. I said, you know, um, she's always going to pull in a different direction to you because everything you told me about it was just so, it was like a real distinct pattern. And um, yeah, unfortunately he never chose, he never chose to do that, to completely let it go. And the last time we spoke to each other, she divorced him. She'd moved on. She was even uh, issuing what we call an AVO out against him, which means he can't contact her and he's still not accepting that. And it just really broke my heart because he's a great guy. He's got a great heart, beautiful man of God, he's got great calling on his life. And um, it's just an anchor to his soul. Even now after she's divorced him, Joel, and I mean, I just feel sad. Um, and he's a really great guy. He was there for me when I was going through a lot of hard times last year. But, you know, God can't make us choose the choice that we need to choose at the best. So I just hope that he does one day, mate. Sorry, I've got to go, mate. But look, we need to do this again. Um, so, I, you know, look, I'll just, I'll just close off by saying, you know, you can post. I re you already know you can do that anyway. Because, uh, I've, you know, I don't have approvals on the people in my group. I used to. But the people are there are the people that I've either got a connection with or I feel confident with, I feel trusting in. Um, so yeah, just go ahead and post. If you want to do a live, if you want to do like a live video, um, cause what you did last time was you shared a live video and, uh, Susan found it and shared it to me and then I shared it to my group and a few people got really blessed by it. So yeah, man, I, I think you've got a great testimony. I think your heart is wonderful and man, it's just, it's just, it's just so great to meet you. Yeah. It really is. Likewise. Can I say a quick prayer for you? I know you got to run. Can I say a quick prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. All right. All right, Father, we just come before you. We humble ourselves before you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you thanks for being an amazing dad to us. And we really, truly love you with all of us. And we ask you to continue to sh sharpen us, continue to work in our hearts, God, so that we, we would reflect who you are in our lives and even in our voices and everything that we do. We're so fragile, God. We're, we're made of dust, but how much you care for each and every one of us, Lord how you you look at us and your thoughts are towards us and you're constantly thinking about us i want to personally say thank you for connecting me to chris thank you for him having your heart but 
more importantly, thank you for putting your heart in him. Thank you for him saying yes to your will and being an amazing father, just like you, God. I know it because I see him in you. I see you, dad, in him so much, God. And he's going to impact so many people's lives on a grander scale, God. And I thank you for everything that he had to go through because it brought him closer to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being faithful to him. Thank you for being next to him. Thank you, Jesus, for being his friend. Thank you for being there for him when no one else was. Mm -hmm. And so I want to say thank you to the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because all three are one. We give you glory, God, and we thank you for the work that you're doing in Chris. We thank you for putting the right wife in his life. We bless her, too, and we thank you for her heart, and we thank you for her gifts. We thank you for how you're using her. She may be behind the scenes and may not always be up front, but what she does behind God is tremendous. What mm -hmm. she's doing behind the scenes is tremendous, mm -hmm. not only for Chris, but for your kingdom. Yes. And we honor her too. And we say thank you for her life. Mm -hmm. And we bless her and we bless this family, God, all of them, Lord. We mm -hmm. place your blood upon them, their doorpost, their home, this ministry, everything that pertains to them and belongs to them, God. We plead the blood and we ask you that you continue to protect them and fight for them on all sides. Help them with their rest, Lord, both physical and spiritual, even at night. We ask you that the warrior angels of God be activated in their lives and continue to fight for them, God, in every angle, every side, God. So we just thank you today for continuing to work in their lives and showing yourself mighty and strong and advancing your great name and your kingdom. And we thank you for this ministry that you set up, God. You did this. Mm -hmm. And we give you the glory for it. And we thank you for Chris and his family. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, brother. I oh, mean, we got to do what you want. I'm sorry. I know you got to run, my man. I know you got to run, but thank you for the time. It went from, I think we got like two hours out of here. I didn't even <laughs> yeah. think it was just the, the flow of the I spirit, know. you know. This is gorgeous. <laughs> and I love it, man. I, I right. get tired of doing this, and I love doing this. And I'm just really, really grateful to the Father for bringing us together, mate. So God bless you, mate. Amen. God bless you too, all right? Bye-bye, mate. Take care.